Hi, my name is uh, Jonathan Tam. Uh, I'm a clinical assistant professor at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and a fellow of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, food protein-induced enterocolitis syndrome, or FPIES. Um, this is a really under-recognized food allergy. It's not the standard type of food allergy um, that we think about. So normally we think about food allergies that uh, happen immediately and cause hives and difficulty breathing and maybe vomiting. Uh, but FPIES is different. Um, in the standard allergy, those uh, symptoms occur immediately. In FPIES, uh, symptoms can be delayed. And so because symptoms are delayed, oftentimes patients aren't believed that foods were the cause of it. Um, it's a, a, a food allergy in which you eat foods and have reactions one to four hours after eating the food. And the reaction can be uh, very, very severe and almost life-threatening. Most of the times it's isolated to uh, uh, gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting and diarrhea, but um, patients can vomit so much that they become uh, dehydrated and uh, become lethargic and look very sick um, and oftentimes have to go to the emergency room for hydration. Up to 15% of these patients will become that sick after a reaction. This uh, FPIES is, is under-recognized, and a lot of people um, uh, oftentimes forget that it, it exists because it doesn't present the same way as other food allergies. Um, the most common causes of FPIES are milk and soy and sometimes grains. Uh, most people only have allergies to a single food, but uh, other people can have multiple food allergies um, related to FPIES reactions. Um, they are usually related to the first foods that children eat. So FPIES can present very early. So uh, as early as three months of age, children can start having reactions um, and vomiting and pre presentations to the emergency room. Um, and it's sometimes foods that aren't thought of as very allergic. So uh, for example, rice and oat are usually thought to be foods that are safe. Um, but these are grains that are often associated with reactions uh, in FPIES patients. Um, unfortunately, there's no testing for FPIES. Um, it's all based on history and understanding what happened to the patient. Um, so uh, standard allergy tests that we have, like skin prick testing or uh, serum blood testing, um, won't show or prove that you have or don't have FPIES. They're, um, uh, the, really the gold standard for uh, proving that you have uh, FPIES is a food challenge, um, which can be difficult in kids that are very, very young. Um, and unfortunately, there's no treatment for FPIES. Um, we have to just uh, avoid the foods, tell the patients to avoid the foods, and uh, treat any reactions that occur. And uh, if reactions are severe, um, they may need um, IV fluids to, for their treatment. Um, there are some new things that are coming out, and thanks to uh, a big effort uh, from an international community, there are new guidelines uh, from 2017, and hopefully more recognition for this, um, uh, this disease that really is oftentimes forgotten. Um, so with that, uh, we, we have to do a better job uh, of uh, teaching patients on how to um, avoid the foods and making sure that kids are gaining weight and that they continue to like to eat because as part of FPIES, several of these kids will often uh, have oral aversions and uh, they'll have to be treated through that. So the families will have to be counseled on nutrition um, and how to maintain a diet in, in these kids. Um, the good news is that most of the time, FPIES resolves. Um, usually in early childhood, it can take a little bit longer, but almost all kids outgrow this. So um, that's uh, uh, FPIES in a nutshell. Um, hopefully that, that's been helpful, and uh, we'll learn more about this disease together.